I want to look now at definite articles in the nominative and accusative cases. Now, this presentation is going to build on two prior presentations, specifically the, our prior discussions of the nominative case and the accusative case. And I hope you have a firm or a, a, a fairly good grip on these concepts. This presentation is going to focus on how these concepts, the, that is nominative and accusative, how they play out in German grammar, specifically how they are reflected in the definite articles. What I'm going to do here is go through the, uh, go through the, go through a quick review of German nouns. I think this is important. It will build on our later discussions. Uh, look at definite articles and then end the presentation with some examples. So by way of review, uh, you'll recall that the German noun manifests gender. That is, a German noun is either masculine, feminine, or neuter. And that this uh, gender is reflected in definite articles. Uh, that is, a German noun could either be preceded by a definite article of der, die, or das, depending upon the gender of the noun. Now, you'll also recall that a German noun could either be singular or plural. Now, if a German noun is singular, the definite article that precedes it will be der, die, oder das. If a German noun is plural, it will only be preceded by the definite article die. So, a definite, uh, the, a German noun, if it's a singular noun, will, will show whether it's masculine, feminine, or neuter will show its gender, whereas a German noun, if, it is in, if it's plural, will only show that it is plural and will not manifest gender. That is, it will only be preceded by a definite article, D. Now, in the nominative case, these are the definite articles you see on the screen. We have der, die, das, and plural, D. You recall that the nominative case is the case we use to talk about the, the subject of the sentence, the primary actor, the, sent, uh, the thing, the idea, the person, the object around which or whom the whole sentence revolves. Now, you'll also recall that the accusative case, we use this case to uh, indicate who receives the action who receives directly the action of the subject of the sentence. And that the definite articles will, for the most part, stay the same. If it's a feminine definite article, D, it'll stay D. If it's a plural, plural definite article, D, it'll also remain D. However, the only thing that changes, and the one thing that we're going to really have to focus on, is if it's a masculine noun preceded by a definite article. In the nominative case, it would be der. However, as this noun assumes or shifts over, changes into uh, an accusative environment, this shift has to be reflected in the gender, uh, excuse me, has to be reflected in the grammar. And so der will change to dane. So I sort of think of it as being uh, the Oklahoma box. Now, everything inside of the Oklahoma box, like you see on your screen, what I've marked in blue, um, are things that don't change. So if it's a feminine definite article, a neuter definite article, plural definite article, it's the same in the nominative and the accusative cases. However, the only thing outside of the Oklahoma box uh, is Dane. So as a masculine noun uh, with a definite article, as it moves to a accusative environment, the, the, this movement will be reflected in the change in the definite article. Dare will, will change to Dane. So what follows, I'm going to look at some specific examples of movement from the nominative case into the accusative case. The first one I want to look at uses a feminine noun. 
And you'll recall, and I, I have an excerpt of the chart, uh, of the, the Oklahoma chart, at the top of the screen. Now you'll recall that the nominative definite article and the accusative definite article for a feminine singular noun remains the same. So it's always D. So we don't really have to worry about changing things. But we do need to know that we do to be, we need to be cognizant and aware that um, we have a change in environment. The, the sentence you see on your screen is totally in the nominative. Das ist die Lampe. That is the lamp. Now, the first thing that we want to do is look for the subject of the sentence. What are we talking about? Who's the, is there a primary actor? And we'd say, well, yes, that is die Lampe. We're talking about the lamp. Now, the next thing we have to do is ask ourselves, well, what is the lamp doing? Do I need to be worried about an accusative case? Now, we look at the verb ist, which is a third person singular verb um, of sein. And sein is just simply a verb expressing condition or being. And so when we talk about condition or being or change of condition or being, um, by default, most of the, by default, most of the time, we'll be using nominative case. So, das ist die Lampe, die Lampe, subject of the sentence, uh, nominative case. Therefore, we have a nominative definite article. Now, let's take this lamp, move it now into an accusative environment. So you see on the screen, the, the chart has remained the same, but what I've done is I've introduced another actor. So we ask ourselves, who is the primary actor in the sentence? Uh, we have a choice of two nouns there. We have er, or er is actually a pronoun, he, and we have die Lampe, which is the lamp again. So who is doing something in the sentence? Well, we look and we see er hat, he has. So the primary actor, the primary agent in this sentence is er. He's the, he's the person who's doing something. Now, since he's the primary actor in the sentence, he's going to be in the nominative case. So he has. Well, what does he have? He has the lamp. So the lamp receives the action of being had by the subject, er. So the lamp is moved over into the accusative environment. It receives the action of being had. So even though the definite article D stays the same, it expresses a different concept. It's expressing the accusative case. Now, let's look at something that really shows this change uh, from a nominative accusative quite clearly. And that is, of course, the masculine, um, the masculine noun, or the masculine case. Or, yeah. Anyway, um, what I have here on the screen is a example of a masculine noun used in a nominative environment. Das ist der Tisch. So again, same step, the same process. What's the subject of the sentence? Who's the primary actor? Who are we talking? Who or what are we talking about? I'd say, well, the, the table. Uh, the table is the primary focus in the sentence. So, well, what is the table doing? Ist. It's not doing anything, really. It's just existing. So, therefore, since we have a verb of being or condition or change of being and condition, this whole sentence is going to be in the nominative case. The subject of the sentence, der Tisch, is going to reflect this state of being in the nominative case by having a definite article in the nominative, in the nominative case, der. All right, now let's take this table and move it into uh, an accusative environment. Now, I've introduced another actor into the sentence again, er, he. Now, this actor is doing something he has. That indicates that, well, he's the primary actor in the sentence, primary agent. He's going to be the nominative case. So er will be nominative. 
we have a third person singular verb, hot, which agrees, uh, subject verb agreement. So, well, what does he have? Something has to be uh, had by him. Something has to receive the action of being had. And that's the table, er hat den Tisch. Now, since the table it receives the action of being had by the subject of the sentence, er, and since this table just happens to be a singular masculine noun, which we use the definite article der, this is the, the one instance where the definite article changes from der to den. So er hat den Tisch. So to show that this singular masculine, singular masculine noun, Tisch, is being had, it's being possessed, being uh, occupied by the subject of the sentence, it has to, it has to show this state of being an accusative object. So quickly, as a, as a way for recap, a way for review, uh, most definite articles stay the same in the nominative and the accusative cases. If it's a feminine noun, if it's a feminine definite article, if it's a neuter definite article, if it's a plural definite article, all of those stay the same. The only thing that we really need to focus on are the singular masculine noun, uh, the definite article dare, dare will change today.